Uh, right, don't go on holiday. It's a um, blooming nightmare out there. Heathrow. God, has anybody been through Heathrow lately? How was it? Dreadful. The Home Office has finally admitted that massive queues at London's Heathrow, where people, including a pregnant woman, have fainted, are unacceptable. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> yeah, they, they stood there with their uh, hands on their uh, hips, just to surveying the disaster in front of them, and said, it's unacceptable. You're doing an excellent job, Pretty Patel. <laughs> Up to today, they were saying that it was acceptable. But now it's unacceptable. Thousands of Brits have been forced to cram into small hallways with no social distancing measures in place and queuing for several hours to pass the immigration. It's all part of Operation Warm Welcome. One holidaymaker called Sonny told Sky News he saw a pregnant woman pass out while in the queue on Friday night. He said there were thousands of families queuing up, just two people in booths up front checking documents. He said children were screaming and crying, which is just like Pretty Patel likes it. <laughs> She's like them, um, you know, them uh, flying ghosts out of Harry Potter. They get their energy off other people's misery. <laughs> What do they call them? What what do, what do they call them? Flying ghosts? Flying ghosts? Yes. Flying ghosts. The uh, holidaymaker said the queue ran um, uh, moved about five feet in the space of about 45 minutes. Wow. Five feet in 45 minutes. That's about as fast as you go on the M25. Five feet in 45 minutes. And then he said the pregnant woman fainted. She should have fainted at the beginning of the 45 minutes. She could have spared, spared herself the weight. One photo appears to show a male traveller lying on the floor in the London uh, airport after apparently passing out while queuing for passport control amid claims that stress holidaymakers had no access to ventilation or toilets and no shuttles were available. Huh, no ventilation. I wonder if uh, Gavin Watsit had anything to do with it. I, 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 I... Yeah, maybe. He's an expert on ventilation. No shuttles, no ventilation, no toilets. Welcome to global Britain. Unshackled from those pesky rules about toilets and air. Now we're setting our own rules and people are passing out in the proper British manner. One patriotic passenger queuing for hours to get into immigration at Heathrow tweeted, kids crying and screaming and fully grown men fainting whilst two people in the booth serving thousands of people queuing up, to, up at the runway. Makes you proud to be British, don't it? No. In a statement, a Heathrow a spokesmodel a blamed unacceptable queuing times in immigration on too few border force officers on duty. She claimed the Home Office were aware of the extra demand and said they were disappointed that they didn't prove sufficient resource. She's not angry, she's just disappointed. Correct. And so they asked the uh, Home Office for uh, a quote. And the Home Office said, don't question us, peasant. They actually said, throughout the pandemic, we have been clear that queue times may be longer as we ensure all passengers are compliant with the health measures put in place to keep the UK public safe. <laughs> People by the thousands squashed together in airless corridors and passing out on tile floors. That doesn't seem to meet the definition of safe, does it? The border farce is overseen by Home Secretary Priti Patel and Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, which answers a lot of questions you have had about this. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's them what done it. It's almost as though this administration is trying to kill us. Industry experts warned huge queues are damaging Britain's reputation as a hub for global travel. Wow, experts, you say. But to be fair, who could have predicted that the end of summer, the end of school holidays and the bank holiday week would have been busy for travel? I mean, you'd need to be a genius to predict that. 
Paul Charles, CEO of the travel PR group PC Agency, told Mail Online that the border force should have known this weekend is one of the busiest for travel back into Britain after the summer period and the bank holiday weekend and urged Miss Patel to get a grip. Uh, which is what she was doing, as she was strangling puppies at the time. <laughs> Dr Stephen Freudman, uh, former president of ABTA, said the uh, images of chaos at Britain's biggest airport make the country look like a laughing stock. <laughs> and will put people off from visiting, he said. He also called the mayhem a disgrace and totally predictable. This country, a laughing stock. Why would anybody think that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we find- Lucy Morton, spokesmodel for the uh, Immigration Services Union, said border force, and in particular large airports like London Heathrow, have suffered from chronic underfunding for some years. Although border force as a whole has recruited a thousand new officers in the last two years, these have been paid for with EU exit money. The EU! And directed solely to inland and international trade while this government uh, flailed its arms around trying to fashion some sort of success out of the uh, Brexit catastrophe. She said, London Heathrow has no inbound recruitment for many years, but staff loss is running at between 10 and 20 percent. Hey, you know what? You could say the same for nurses and doctors and police persons and bin people and pretty much uh, everybody else that we rely on, that successive Tory governments have allowed to disappear on the wind like a bad smell. Uh, probably because they were following the uh, the, the lead of um, a certain uh, tangerine scream in the, the White House, who knows a lot about wind, by the way. I know a lot about wind. I know a lot about wind. One traveller told Mail Online last night, I am currently at Heathrow Airport and the queues have been three to five hours long for immigration. Wow. I landed in Terminal 5 and the transit train wasn't working, so we had to walk in a tunnel for 20 minutes with no ventilation during COVID. We've been in the back of a queue for two to three hours, but some will have to wait for five hours with families and babies stuck in the queue. (laughs) Oh, my God. What's happening to this country? I wonder who might be responsible. Um... Another traveller said the worst thing is that the way the queues were organised, it meant that you couldn't distance and had people walking in opposite direction, facing you all the time at either side. Everyone coming in from different flights, all together in one very small, enclosed, unventilated space. If you wanted to design a super spreader event, this would be the way to do it. And then at the end of it all, no one even checked any of our COVID paperwork, he said. Oh, my God, you've got to be kidding me. He said, we simply went through the e-passport gates. Hey, I think that was the gate that Michael Gove went through to get into that club, wasn't it? The e-passport gate. He said, we've been queuing for more than two hours. The baggage hall was also just a mess, with baggage piling up so that you had to walk around hunting for your cases, which had been removed from the conveyors. It felt as though no one cared. <laughs> That's going to be the new slogan unveiled at the Tory Autumn Conference. No one cares. Three words, snappy and memorable. (coughs) Images taken on Friday showed snaking lines of frustrated passengers waiting to enter the UK in scenes that are now wearily familiar due to border farce failing to tackle an issue that has been going on all summer. That's because Prissy Patel has been busy spotting dinghies. (coughs) And thinking up new laws for pet napping that are exactly the same as the existing laws for pet napping. I was talking about this last night. You know that uh, she's oh, going to get really, really strict on the pet nappers and uh, they're going to go to jail for seven years. We're going to bring in a new law that it's illegal to steal someone's dog. Well, guess what, fact fans? It's already illegal to steal someone's dog and the penalty is jail for up to seven years. What a bunch of charlatans. I am stunned. Ex-Tory leader Ian Middlename Smith called the scenes at arrivals madness. He said... (laughs) James Gray, MP for North Yorkshire, said, What the hell is going on? (laughs) What the hell is going on, he said. What the hell is going on? Exactly. The latest bout of queuing chaos began on um, Sunday. Last Sunday got to be kidding me people are people arrived at Heathrow last Sunday they're still waiting to get out 
It's been repeated every day this week. But the Home Office, which has repeatedly pinned the problem on uh, understaffing, has maintained an unapologetic stance, despite the widespread fury from the public and senior travel industry figures. Prissy Patel is not for apologising. On Wednesday, journalist Guy Falkenbridge compared the scenes that met him after touching down in the UK to the dying days of the Soviet Union. <laughs> he tweeted a picture taken two hours into the queuing process with hundreds of people stood in front of him in the line. The issue had been exacerbated by a shortage of border force agents and many going into self-isolation for COVID. But earlier this week, a senior Tory MP insisted the issues should have been addressed a long time ago. Hey, you know what? If only we had a Tory government and not this catastrophic Labour administration run by the incompetent Jeremy Corbyn, then we wouldn't be in this position. Correct. 